Hello, and welcome back to Bear Builds Bikes. Today, we've got a real treat, a Sun Bicycles Baja Trike. This one's in aqua. It has the disc brakes front and rear, seven speed drivetrain. It should be a lot of fun. Let's get started. So of course, first things first, let's get the bike out of the box. Now, the, this bike comes in two separate boxes. The main frame is in box A, and the wheels and rear basket are in box B. This box, I don't recommend cutting open with a razor knife because the tires could get damaged while slicing, even at the very edge, because they are so big. This box, not so critical. It's basically the same type of trike frame that we've built in the past and everything in there should be as it usually is. I'm gonna go ahead, get everything out of the box, lay it out on the table, and then we'll go through what comes with it and the differences in how to assemble this as opposed to one of the traditional trikes. So as you can see from the open box, they did secure the rear assembly with a couple of zip ties to the frame. So we'll just cut those ties and then we can remove the rear assembly. Get our seat out. Now from here we can take the main frame out because everything else is packed underneath it. And get our handlebar our parts box, and our chain guard. So we have most of the components out of the boxes. This is the rear drive assembly, our brake levers, pedals, grips, seat post, derailleur, shifter, reflector mount and reflectors, all the stuff for the wheels, the frame bolts, the chain, all your cables, your chain guard, and your zip ties to mount to the cable. So at this point, we really don't need to open this box yet because it only contains the wheels and the back basket, but we do like to inspect the product before we get too far into the assembly and find out we've got a bigger problem. So on this box, because the tires are so close to the box, we're going to actually pull the staples. We're going to pry them up with a screwdriver and pull them out. Like this. Now, depending on the level of adhesive, what taking these staples out has done for us is keeping us from getting scratched while reaching into the box and from cutting the tires when we pull them out. As you can see, all three were very close to the edge. It would have been a very bad day to slice into one of those. This is just a filler box that they put in no need to keep that around. This is our rear basket. And our three wheels. The front. And both the rears. So from this point, we're going to go through the usual, getting everything unpacked, putting the seat post in, clamping it into the frame, unpacking the frame, getting everything ready, and then we'll start going into the details with the other pieces. Assembler's grease in the seat post. Our seat post. 
and a 13 millimeter wrench. Definitely get this nice and tight. This has to support a lot of weight. My clamp here won't grab onto the frame like the clamps that we have at the shop, but it is sufficient for what I need to do here. So now we'll go through the unpacking process. I'll go four times faster just so that you don't have to watch it all in real time, but here we go. So similar to other trike builds that we've done in the past, the rear end can be slid into the rear of the frame and then we will have to put the derailleur on it. Now, unlike the others, these come with two bolts already in it for the frame because it would be too hard to take the rotor off and everything else to be able to get these in. So if you loosen up the nut on either side, enough so that you can get these into the slot in the dropout. These fins that are here will help hold it into the frame at the right angle. You're gonna want your drive assembly on this side and your brake over here. And you can just make these snug because you're not really putting them in place until you get the other bolts in. Now you can take your other two black frame bolts from the inside and go out, put the washers and the nuts on, and we'll be able to put the derailleur on. And none of this has to be super tight at the moment. We're going to put the rear derailleur on. We might want it to shift just a little bit so that we can wiggle things around. So this part is kind of hard for you to see, but this piece here is your derailleur hanger. It's welded onto the main frame of the rear end. This little lip that's on there is what the tension adjustment screw has to sit against. So our rear derailleur you can see has a preload adjustment screw right here the way it's sitting it's in too far to make it easy to assemble this bike so we'll back it out to where it's almost flush then we'll get our five millimeter Allen to install this on the rear frame so with your preload tension screw backed all the way out you should be able to set this right into the derailleur hanger and get the screw started. Get it snug. As you can see, the tension screw here is sitting on the lip. We can go in with our three millimeter. And increase tension so that the derailleur can get to first gear the biggest chain ring as it comes down in its slope. 
Now we will adjust the high and low stop screws that stop the motion from going past the chain rings on either end of the spectrum. So as you can see by the setting, the derailleur is being prevented from going all the way over to seventh by the high screw being too far inward. So we will back it out. And now we see the full range of motion. This, the, the derailleur will stop when it's in line with that last gear. So now if we pull the derailleur all the way over, we can see that it goes past first gear, which is here. So we're gonna tighten up on the low screw just enough to prevent it from going off the other side. So when your derailleur screws are adjusted properly, it'll stop before it goes off of the gear on both ends of the spectrum. And now with our 17 millimeter, we will tighten down our frame bolts. So as you can see, our chain has two distinct ends. The end with the pin still sticking out and the end with the bearing still exposed. This end is going to go outwards on the bike in this direction when we run it over that last freewheel. So we're gonna feed this end of the chain down through the frame, leaving about a foot or so to go over the freewheel. The back part of the chain has to go around the jockey wheel at the top and feed through and around the back jockey wheel. So if we take the end that does not have the pin sticking out and we feed it through the derailleur over the little guide stop. And then around the back jockey wheel. Now the front part, we're gonna tuck over the frame. And from here, we can clip them together. Now we'll use our chain breaker to put the pin in. And we come to where our pin is, we place it into our chain breaker, hold it down and drive the pin through the chain. Until the actuator pin is flush with the side of the chain. You'll start to see it come out the back side and you have it flush on the inside. Now, right where that link is, it should be pretty tight right now. You may have to bend it against itself to loosen it up. So now we'll take our chain using the tension of the derailleur. We can pull it forward, get it set on the front sprocket, and it's now installed. Now we'll move on to putting on the chain guard. So we need to take the screws out of the frame to be able to put the chain guard on. And we access this one through the sprocket. Now our chain guard. Just get the screw started. You're gonna wanna be able to shift this one around so you can line up the hole inside the crank. Hopefully you have a magnetic tip screwdriver to do this. As you get it started, center your chain guard. And tighten down both screws. Now test it that it's not hitting the crank. You do hear a little bit of grinding on the brake right now because the rear axle is not tensioned until we put the other wheel on but as long as our chain guard is not hitting our crank or our sprocket that's what we're looking for 
tighten down your screws accordingly. Make sure everything is nice and snug, tight, finished. Now from the factory, they put the headset on backwards. They also put a spacer at the top of it. If you peel your rubber cap off of the stem, you can lo loosen your preload screw. This is the screw that holds the tension in the entire bearing setup for the headset. Take the spacer off. Put the spacer back. Put our stem back and our preload screw. Just snug it up so that the fork turns freely, but there's no wiggle. And then you can snug up the two clamp bolts on the back of the headset. You're not gonna make them super tight because you don't have the alignment done yet. And then we can take out our cap screws. And now we'll get our handlebar. All right, so now with our handlebar, we ultimately want it to end up in this position. We're gonna turn it down and set it right into the throat of the clamp. We're gonna take our cap and start our bolts by hand. We're gonna to try to make sure that our cap is equally gapped top and bottom so that the clamp will actually have the most effective angle. And once everything is snug, you can bring it to the position you actually want to set it in with our six millimeter. And don't lock it down yet because you're probably going to want to adjust it once the bike is on the floor. But for now, the handlebars are in. Now we can start to add our controls. So the first pieces we're going to add are the brake levers. Followed by the shifter and the grips. So as you probably know, just a cheap dollar store hairspray, a little spritz in each side. Put the short grip on the side with the shifter. And you only need to go flush with the end of the bar because these have caps that are different from the traditional trikes. Same with the other side. And then you can put the caps in. Next up, we'll start running our cables. From our parts box, we have our shifter housing. We have our longer rear brake cable and our shorter front brake cable. Untie these and the ball end will go into the cradle in the brake lever itself. Open up the adjuster barrel till the gap is visible all the way through. Tighten the outer lock and then go all the way in and push your cable housing in. So now we'll do the same thing for the rear brake. Open our bale, slide our cable end in, turn our adjuster screw out to where we can see our first gap, get our second gap all the way through so that the cable will slide in easily, come out with the lock, go back in. 
and now we'll route it through the frame. The cable guides that are welded to the bottom of the frame here have the shifter side and the brake side. They are that way because the brake is on this side and the derailleur is on that side. Start feeding our cable through the guides. Underneath the crank. And this one will go over the axle and tucked back in. So it'll go through the last of the guides, go over the axle, and tuck in from behind over here. Our rear derailleur is essentially the same thing. Unwrap the housing. Unwrap the inner wire and feed the housing with the inner. This one you will follow down the same way across the back and over to the rear derailleur. Over the axle and around back through the derailleur and tuck it in. So as far as our front brake cable goes, we're going to route it through the other cables through the inside of the fork and on the back we put our zip tie through the little cable holder that'll keep it off the tire and tuck our brake line into the back of the caliper so before we can put our front wheel on we're not going to take the chance that this caliper is aligned with that rotor because it's never been on the bike your best bet is to loosen up the holding bolts so that the caliper moves freely. That way you don't risk damaging the rotor. Take out our shim and now we can slide our front wheel in. I put my knee under the wheel, tighten down the axle nuts by hand. These don't have lawyer tabs but the washers fit into the reveal of the dropout itself, holding the wheel pretty straight. We'll get our 15 millimeter wrench and tighten these down. And now we'll work on aligning the brake. So now we can take and loosen up our holding bolt on the brake caliper. And we can run our cable behind the washer along the guide path there. Now we're only gonna put a little bit of tension on this before we tighten down the bolt to tension the brake to where the wheel doesn't move. And then lightly adjust our holding bolts top and bottom. And you should have good alignment. As you can see, the rotor is not touching on either brake pad inside the caliper. By shining a light through the caliper, you can see that the rotor is not touching the caliper or the pads. Now we can go ahead and tighten down these holding bolts to make sure that the caliper doesn't move. This is also the time when you can trim off your excess zip tie, put a cap, uh, a crimp on your cable so it doesn't fray, and pretty much your front end is done. All right, so hopefully you can see this. I'm gonna try and get in as tight as possible. The disc rotor right here is pressing against the brake pad on that side because the tension of the axle has not been pulled over yet by having the tension of the wheel on it. So if we remove our axle nut and our washer and our plastic spacer, we leave this spacer on 
and we're going to take one of the rear wheels and slide it over the axle. We're going to put our washer back on the outside and our 22 millimeter nut. Now to make this a little easier, we're going to take this side off as well. Now we don't want to permanently mount either of these wheels right now. But this one locks into the drive pins and can help us get the tension of the rear axle right where we want it. Now that we have this wheel on, that helps to hold the axle where we need it so that we can get the right tension on the bolts for this side. Again, we do want a little wiggle. We don't want to crush these bearings. If we go to where this, the nut finally bottoms out, you can hear just a little bit of play. No play at all going to back it off about a quarter of a turn just so we can hear that bearing clicking just a little bit that should help align the rotor in the caliper so before we go too much further with adjusting the brake we actually have to install the cable all right so we're going to feed our cable into the caliper arm we're going to put a little bit of tension on it we know it's already a little too much. And then we're going to loosen up our holding bolts for our caliper so that we can align it to what the brake is. Now if we pinch our brake, you can see how it will still move. but it should give us a baseline to figure out exactly what the alignment needs to be. Sometimes you do have a bent rotor. It'll be clear for most of the way around. For this, we're gonna use our rotor tool to gently massage the rotor over away from where it's rubbing. All right, so now I'm gonna take the rear wheels back off again. I'll leave that one. This one here is just gonna be in the way for moving in and out while trying to put the basket on. So we'll take off the nut and the washer. This should not change the tension on this at all because this is where everything stops on the drive side. Everything here is what tensions the entire axle all the way through. The next step will be to hook up the rear derailleur to the shifter. So now with our five millimeter Allen wrench, we'll loosen up the holding nut. We'll thread our cable through behind the washer here. There's a little slot that it fits right into. Pull it all the way through, make sure it doesn't kink on the way. Make sure the bottom of that little washer tab is down. And you wanna pull pretty securely on that. Get it good and snug. You can leave your whisker for now. We're gonna test everything going through the gears and make sure that our adjuster barrel and everything else is right where we want it to be. So now we need to actually secure our shifter to the handlebar so that it doesn't turn while we're trying to go through the gears.
Now our brake lever has the uh, parking brake on it. So what we need to do is set it up in such a way that that parking brake pin does not touch the shifter below it. When you pull up on the lever, you should be able to drive that pin down without hitting the shifter itself. When we go to adjust our shifter, we're gonna make sure that our adjuster barrel is all the way in. And we can actually set our other brake lever Just set it snug. So now the next step will be to put the pedals on so that we can check our gears properly. The pedal that has the threads that start at the left and go uphill to the right is the right pedal. We'll put some grease on, put some grease in the spindles. You don't need a ton. You just want to keep them from binding. Start the screw in a clockwise motion. Don't force it. Let it find its way in. Now we'll do the same on the other side. When reaching through, you're going to start the pedal in the same direction. It's going to go clockwise from where you're standing if you're reaching through the bicycle. Fortunately, this is freewheel, so we can pedal backwards to set our pedals. Now make sure they're really set good. And now we can see how well our gears are adjusted. Alright, so essentially what we want is one click of the shifter moves the chain one gear lower. Still getting a little hesitation, so we're going to turn out our adjuster barrel just a little bit. Now it's working very well. And now we're going to trim off the excess cable and put a cable crimp on it. Keep it from fraying out in the future. And the same for the brake on that side. So the next part of the build is to put the basket on. Without the wheel here, it makes life much easier to get to these four mounting holes. We have to cut the zip tie that is holding the hardware on and we have to put our rear reflector on which fits into the holes on the back of the rack. Put our screw in. Get it nice and tight so it doesn't rattle. The basket can sit on top. We're going to pull our bolts out of our bag. Now the one thing I've learned with these is that they are stainless bolts and if you do not grease them before you put this basket on you'll never get them back out and you may bind them halfway in and they'll stick and break. So the best thing I can offer is that you put some grease on these things before you get them through the frame. Each one gets a washer, goes through the basket and then down through the frame. Then the bottom gets a washer and there's a nylox nut that holds it on from the bottom. If you stack them like that, hold this with your finger, you can get it started. Don't go crazy, just get them to where the threads are mating. Do the same thing for the other three.
And once you've got them all started, you can use your three-way Allen wrench or one of the longer handled ones and a 10 millimeter from the bottom and get them all tight. Just go to the point where they're snug first, in case anything has to be moved around. As you can see, it goes much easier with a ratcheting wrench. And once you've got them successfully snugged, then you can go back around again and tighten everything down. And then the last step in that is to put on the little plastic caps that they come with, a little dress up kit. These fit very tightly. Be very careful putting them in. You do not want to distort the shape of them in any way, otherwise they won't go in. So now that our basket is installed, we can go ahead and put our rear wheel back on. Make sure we align the drive pins into the hub. We're going to assemble our front reflector now. Same principle as the rear. It sits into the holes. Screw starts at the top. Get it nice and tight so that it doesn't rattle. Now this will go through the fork and back this way. But the first thing we want to do is get the nut or the bolt and the washer to go in first, but then we're going to hook the reflector onto the nut from the back. And start our nut on there. Now with a 10 millimeter and a Phillips head, you can get this thing pretty tight. And see I'm going just alongside the reflector with the screwdriver and doing all the work in the back with the ratcheting wrench. You can use two 10 millimeter wrenches if you'd like, whatever suits your preference. Now, one of the last parts to go on is the seat. 14 millimeter wrench standard seat clamp. Always tighten them up evenly so that you have equal threads going through both bolts. And don't completely torque it down because once we put it on the floor then we have to make sure it's level and get everything else adjusted for final. So the last piece of equipment to get installed are the rear reflectors on the tires. We're going to put those between a spoke Put the clip in, turn it till it locks, and push it down against the rim. We'll do that to the other two as well. All right, so now we're gonna take her down and we're gonna get everything adjusted the way it's supposed to be. The alignment, the rider compartment, the seat angle, make sure everything is nice and tight. All right, nothing left to do but take it for a ride. Make sure everything is noise free, that the braking is good, that the gears work well under pressure. And uh, yeah, this one's pretty much ready for sale. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I hope you've learned a little something. I've tried to do the best I can with the parts that I'm supplied with. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day like, share, and subscribe. It would help me a great deal. Have a wonderful day.